All right, so we got the 550 NASA ARF. It's all unpacked. Got your NASA controller here. We'll open that up here in a little bit. Power distribution board, ESCs, motors. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is, I like to mount the motors to the arms. For that, we'll use the M3 screws. You have M2.5 for most of the frame stuff, and then the M3 are gonna be used to mount the motors to the arms. I like to take the bullet connectors, feed those through the frame first. That way, when we're all done, we get the ESCs ready. Those will be up underneath and ready to mount there. Got a power drill. I'll make it a lot faster. Just make sure you set the uh, if it has a torque on it. Set it down low. That way you don't drive the screws through your plastic frame. And we'll use the M3. And to prevent flyaways, use a little bit of Loctite. You don't want your motors coming off. Set that to the side and go to the next one. So now we're ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be getting the ESCs and the battery lead to the power distribution board. Okay, now we got the bottom power distribution board, the bottom frame piece. Just have it kind of laid out to give you an idea. It's pretty simple on how it goes. Plus goes to red, minus goes to black, and it goes all the way around. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Your ESCs are going to go on the ends of the arms and then there's one other spot on the board right here and that's going to be for your battery connector uh, your lipo connector whichever you decide to use I'm going to use a Deans so I'll solder that on there you can also use this power spot as additional power source for you're going to put your LED module there and you can also use it for if you want to do uh, LEDs on the arms you can use that power source there so I'm going to get the ESCs ready. What I've done over here is I like to use the shield, little wire shield, wire mesh shield. Okay, so I'm going to feed the wire mesh over first. Get that nice and snug. Take heat shrink tubing. This is just the first end. Go ahead and feed that over. I like to work it down to the heat shrink that's already on the DGI ESC. Get there nice and snug. Then take your heat gun. Make sure you get the tubing shrunk correctly, but at the same time you don't want to sit there and toast one of your ESCs. All right, we moved over to the solder station. We got all the ESCs ready to be soldered. I went ahead and made a quick Dean's plug, put some shielding over that also, get the solder, uh, tin the tips already, get that all ready, and then we have our board. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tin each of these pads first, and then we'll come back and then we'll put the ESCs on. Okay, always use flux. Flux is going to help the solder flow much better it's going to create a better connection and it'll avoid cold solder joints which can lead to problems and just uh, not as good as a connection so right here you can see this one's for your lipo terminal place a little bit of flux on there clean my tip Okay, so we got that ready. Now we have our lipo lead, the Dean's connector. Same thing, I'm gonna leave this heat shrink in the back, and then once we're done, I'll bring that up and move it closer. I'm gonna put just a little bit of flux on each tip. That'll help it flow in and connect to the board a lot simpler. Nice should look like mercury, a little ball of mercury on there when you do it right. 
if it's all gray and looks like an old battery terminal in your car or something, you probably want to redo it. Makes it simple. All right, so that's the battery terminal. Now we're going to start on your ESCs. Same thing, I'm going to flux each of these pads, and then I'll start doing the ESCs. I'm going to turn the fan on for this, keep this smoke out of my face. So that is all prepped and ready to add our ESCs. Again, ESC is pretty simple. You go plus is red, black is minus. A little bit of flux. Each of those. solder joint right there. Bring the heat shrink down, cover that, and move on to the next one. Okay, so we got all this soldering done. So the next step is we're going to apply the bottom board to your arms. Right here, the two screws at the bottom. And for that, we're going to use the smaller screws right here. The only thing you want to make sure you do is that you get the red arms on the front of the copter and then you'll use the white for the rest. I put the battery at the back and make this the front. So I'm gonna use these two right here. This is why we put the shield on the wire, is to make sure that it's not gonna pinch, grab anything in there. Feed this into the arm here. You don't have to crank it down all the way just yet. I want thread lock, but at the same time, I don't want it spewing out and getting all over the frame. There's the bottom piece. Next, we're going to flip it over and move on to mounting the electronics. All right, so what we've done is went ahead and installed the LED. Put the positive to the positive, minus to minus. That's where your lipo goes in. Same thing, I covered it. That way it doesn't cut on the edge of your board. And I'm just gonna fold it under and use double side tape to secure it to the bottom. That way I can see it in all orientations. Now, what I like to do is go ahead and put the receiver wires and your NASA wires. Go ahead and place all those in their proper positions right now. That way later on you can twist it and get a nice clean configuration. Okay, so what we've done is we went ahead and mounted everything with gyro tape for both the NASA and my receiver. When you're plugging this in, just make sure that your motors are all facing to the front of the copter. On the NASA, your motor inputs are facing the front and your inputs for your receiver are facing the rear. That's how it needs to be set up. And then you just uh, do throttle to throttle, you know, elevator, elevator, rudder, rudder. Then what you want to do is on a two position switch, usually your gear, you run that into your two position switch right above the X1, the uh, looks like the V. And then for X1 and X2, I use that on my auxiliary three and auxiliary four for the slider switch on my JR11X. That way I can control the gains for both Addy mode and for a normal free mode. And the last one, X3, is going to be your input from your LED module. That's going to control your LED module, let it know when you have lower uh, battery voltage and stuff like that. So we went ahead and mounted all those. We have motor one is the first arm on the right, Motor 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Plug those in accordingly. I'm sorry, the even motors are going to go clockwise, and the odd motors are going to go counterclockwise. So this would be 1, counterclockwise, 2, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, etc. Et We've got that all done. The wiring's nice and neat. Make sure this is final. You have your radio binded, so you, just in case you have to get your bind plug in there, make sure that's done now because once we put the top plate on, it's going to be a lot harder to get these in. 
If you want to set up the auxiliary channels for the X1 and 2, make sure you do that now because it, uh, it can be hard to get to it once we're done. So now we're going to install the top plate. So keep your battery going along this intersection and get those all ready to be bolted in. And there you go, full frame, much better, and ready to go. Last thing I'm going to do is zip tie the amps, uh, the speed controllers, to the arms, and then we'll move on into the software calibration.